Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Desperate people. Desperate measures. Fight or flight, they choose to run. Every day, people run from the law. Chasing the suspect. They take the big chance. Hey, he lost it. Get it in, they risk their lives. Moving on to the, railing. the lives of the police. And the lives of anyone who gets in their way. He's gonna, he's gonna hijack this car. Much of what you see tonight has never been seen before. This is footage provided by police and news agencies from around the world. Take him out, take him out. So that we may understand the full extent of the problem. Because if you're an innocent bystander caught in the middle of a chase, you need to know what to expect. This isn't just a problem for the people who run. It's a problem for all of us. For everyone on the road. Oh, he dropped! Sheriff John Bunnell. When it comes to pursuits, this is the cop's best friend. Almost no one can outrun police cars and a helicopter, but they keep trying. Sometimes it's pure adrenaline, fight or flight. That one moment of panic that can lead to a lifetime of regret. So keep your seatbelt on. What we're about to show you will change your thinking about police pursuits forever. Houston, Texas. The entire police department is mobilized looking for three bank robbers. We've got a maroon sedan in sight, fleeing northbound. A car guns its engines. Use caution, these suspects are armed. What the police don't realize is that they aren't following the bank robbers. These are two novice housebreakers on their way home from a job. They thought the sirens were meant for them. So they ran, and the police followed. The burglars panic and barrel into a crowded intersection. He's cutting through the intersection, into the far left. Oh, he just took a hit. He just took a hit. One suspect thinks he can escape, but with the cops approaching from both directions, the only way to go is down. Then he realizes his mistake. Looks like he's holding on to the railing. He is holding on to the railing. Oh, he dropped. He dropped. The suspect dropped from the railing. He tumbles three stories onto the concrete below. He's up and running. He's up and running. Incredibly, he continues on pure adrenaline. He's headed for the woods on the far side. No officers in sight here. He's in the clear. Police have no way to stop him, except intimidation. This chopper pilot swoops in and cuts off the suspect's path. He's, uh, okay, he stopped running. The police are right on top of him. It works. He's surrendering to the helicopter. This thief was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And he took the fall. But somewhere today in the city of Houston are three very lucky bank robbers. Charlotte, North Carolina. A man has stolen a car that is almost perfect for outracing pursuing officers. A Mercedes-Benz 400 SE with 300 horses under the hood. Come on, guys. You gotta move. You gotta move. You gotta move. But waiting in the wings is a secret weapon. A South Carolina trooper driving a super-equipped Ford Mustang. Oh, he ain't going nowhere. The smaller Mustang dogs, the more powerful bends relentlessly. Other vehicles, like this motorcycle, gladly give way. When two trucks block the road ahead, the suspect passes on the right and quickly races off. The frustrated trooper has to wait. I can't get by these trucks. Watch again. He blitzes past the double rig on the right, coming within inches of these merging cars. Other units quickly catch up to him, but traffic is thick now and the suspect swerves right into a construction zone. The officer tries to block the bends from escaping. He smashes directly into the side of the big German car. But again, the Mercedes muscles its way through. Back on surface streets, the officer catches up, pulling even with the suspect but up ahead, a van headed straight for them. From the unit behind, we see the suspect playing a dangerous game of chicken. To save an innocent life, the trooper pulls aside and lets the Mercedes pass. You had to do it, bud. Down the road, the Mercedes loses the Mustang by turning on a dime into a gas station. Somebody get in front of him! The other officers quickly take up the slack. A trooper tries to force the Mercedes to spin out, but this Benz was built to hug the road, and it's not letting go. 
this elegant German car is falling apart. To make matters worse, it's now rush hour, and the suspect is headed back to the freeway. Officers need to end this chase now. All right, Jack, right here. I'm coming up behind. A determined trooper rides the suspect's bumper. The Mercedes begins to swerve, but hangs on. One more nudge, and the Mercedes goes flying up the freeway on-ramp out of control. And this chase is over. What used to be an $85,000 luxury sedan is now scrapped. What used to be a car thief is now an inmate, serving 20 years. And the South Carolina Mustang? Still chasing them down. County, Oklahoma. Pursuit of a stolen truck with an innocent passenger. 110 miles per hour. Visual glimpses of him every now and then. He's still northbound on Highway 10. I'm gaining on him. The culprit has already pulled way ahead of the slower police truck. Cut the guy off too and set up a roadblock for being shut down. The driver of the stolen truck veers across the yellow line, blindly hoping other cars won't be there. Neither he nor his passenger know that tragedy is just seconds away. He's uh, almost got one hit on. No, no, he's lost it. He's lost it, Turkey County. He's rolling. No, no, he's ejected one. Unbelievably, the suspect jumps over his friend as he tries to get away. Get on the ground! Get on the ground right now! Give me those hands! Let me see the hands! This officer is still shaken by those terrible four seconds. As the truck rolls and tumbles, tossing the passenger out the window. Incredibly, the young man comes within inches of being crushed. But he survives to stand trial. The driver thought he could get away. He lost it. He lost it, Jerky County. He thought wrong. As soon as a chase happens, you're trying to figure out why the person's running. That's the first thing you think of. But that kind of goes away because then you've got to focus on catching him. Mesa, Arizona, 6 a.m. The early morning quiet is shredded with sirens as an all-night surveillance finally pays off. The cops want to talk to them about a string of car burglaries. But these guys don't intend to talk to anyone. The police radio ahead to put down spike strips. It works. All four tires are punctured instantly. But the suspects aren't stopping. In fact, driving on the rims, they only speed up. Reckless? Of course. These guys are betting their very lives against the next several years in prison. This is desperation. But these guys plan to run till the wheels fall off. And finally they do. The tires just can't take anymore. The officer expects the suspects to keep going, and he's ready for their next move. One more time. Training versus desperation. The training pays off again. Officers know that if this guy hadn't been caught tonight, he'd be out there ripping off your car tomorrow. One, two, six, one, two, four. Make sure you get those stop sticks out of the road. High fives for a job well done. Nobody, but nobody, can outrun the cops and the helicopter. Too crazy to be on the road. Too foolish to get off the road. Too confused to find the road. They're in trouble. On the run and out of their mind. Training and experience. That's the difference between them and us. Sometimes, when there's no other way, when they have to be stopped, it's the difference between life and death. Minneapolis, Minnesota. Oh, he hits that truck! He hits that truck! This guy is reckless. The two men in this minivan are young, scared, and on the run from the law. Allegedly, they were seen breaking into a tobacco store. Their van is filled with stolen goods. And these two crooks are willing to take wild chances. They are flying through these alleys. They're just shooting across the streets. If anyone comes into this alley right now, they just wouldn't have a chance. Yeah, there are probably a visual on the suspect. I see patrol cars now, and traffic is really getting... Oh! Uh, he hit a 4x4 four four and smashed right into that building. The woman and her young child in the red Bronco are shaken, but alive. 
The police are pulling up. Passenger's out and he's running. He's running well ahead. Be advised, it is a foot pursuit at this time. This man is really running. He's over that fence. There's an officer behind. Wait a minute. He is down. He is not getting up. He's putting his hands up to be cuffed. Dispatch, we need an ambulance out here. The woman and child were rushed to the hospital. With the energy of youth and the panic of jail time, this kid has reason to outrun anything. The boys pled guilty and the oldest was sentenced to seven years in prison. Driving at these speeds, they were lucky it wasn't manslaughter. Motorcycles. They're more nimble than cars. They're quicker than cars. And they're more deadly than cars. Motorcyclists are a daring breed. But when they run from the law, it's not daring. It's just plain dumb. In Texas, this suspect can't shake the police on surface streets or in parking lots. So he decides to hit the highway, going the wrong direction. But even with this lunatic stunt, he can't lose the cop behind him. So he ditches the bike, thinking he'll outrun the cop on foot. Wrong. The cyclist couldn't believe the cop would follow him the wrong way. But with oncoming traffic this slow, staying on him was easy. San Diego, California. The man on this powerful motorcycle is an example of just how daring and relentless it can get. Police have tried to pull him over for reckless driving, but they haven't seen anything yet. At nearly 100 miles an hour, the suspect slashes through highway traffic. Trapped, the suspect decides to go where no cop is willing to follow. Okay, the guy is going to be hanging a U-turn. Okay, this guy is going the wrong way on the freeway on ramp. Do not follow the pursuit. Able, we'll call it. Then when the cops close in again, our speed merchant starts to make mistakes. He thinks he spotted a shortcut off-road where he can lose the police. Uh, going into a cemetery up here. But like the cockroach in the Roach Motel, he can get in, but there's no way out. He's going to dump it right here. Yeah. Reacting too okay, fast, he, just... he loses control on the dirt and tumbles off his bike. But miraculously, he hops to his feet. Not a scratch on him. Daring, dumb, and very lucky. The man on this bike pulls over and calmly waits for his ticket. He knows that from a dead stop, no car can match his bike's awesome acceleration. So when the cop steps out of the car, the biker cranks up that four-stroke V-twin engine and starts to fly. With electronic fuel injection and horsepower to burn, there's only one thing this bike doesn't have, a skilled rider. This genius decides to swerve right in front of the cop and then hit his brakes. Lucky to be alive. It's a pleasant afternoon near Dallas, Texas, and the owner of this car is not happy. I said, stop! You're stealing my car! I tried jumping over so I could catch him through the window or something, and he hit me with the front tire and just took off and peeled off down the road. Now this poor guy's car is being driven by a lead-footed car thief. I'd advise anybody that's aware of this, pull over and get out of the way, because uh, this is very dangerous in rush hour traffic. You can imagine that light, to 90 fast, miles an hour and maneuverable. This little by. Nissan proves that size doesn't matter. He's in the median. Looks like he may be crossing over into oncoming traffic here. Let's uh, see if we can keep an eye on it. Looks like he may get back on the road again. Uh, Exiting the highway, he sideswipes a car and narrowly misses a dump truck as he carves a path into the grassy uh, shoulder. Dump truck there, then he dump makes truck. a mistake. Looks like this may be coming to an end here. The car thief finds himself in a parking lot, trapped by the Texas DPS. It looks like DPS is going to be able to, to box him in here. But it ain't over till it's over. Oh, I can't believe that he made it around that police car. Oh, Next, in a bizarre twist parking. of fate, it's the culprit like is stopped the, the by a simple traffic light. Yeah, looks like he's stopping. He's, he's getting out. He's on foot. Uh, you can see this uh, long-haired individual without a shirt on. Shirtless and sure-footed, the car thief makes a mad dash for freedom. He's in an industrial area just north of Fair Park, climbing the fence. He almost makes it pointing until a mechanic spots him and points him out is. to police. He's right down below us. And here. just when the he's wrath of Texas is about to catch up to him, he gives up. His smartest move yet. He jumped over the fence, then he was trying to hide on the restroom. Then the police just came by and got him. All the wild driving, insane maneuvers, and crazy chances get you one thing in Texas. It looks like they've got him in custody. And, Busted. Uh, police officers encountering juveniles in a police situation sometimes have to treat them just as deadly as their adult counterparts. West Springfield, Massachusetts. 
Police are in pursuit of a stolen car. We're going to assume primary lead here. But Officer Murray would soon learn that this is the most dangerous kind of driver. Be advised, driver and the passenger section Okay, it looks like four subjects. A 14-year-old who's never driven before in his life. All he knows is what he's seen in the movies. He thinks he can imitate the stuntman and swerve through traffic untouched. He's going to split these two cars. He's going to try to split them. Oh, he made it through. He also thinks that if he reaches the state line, the cops will have to break off the chase. He's wrong again. We're going to continue. We're coming up on the line. We have authorization to continue. The kid sees a cop still behind him. He panics, hitting the gas. But at speeds at over 100 miles an hour, he could get them all killed. Officers decide to give them room. He'll fall back and let them ride with it. But the driver's inexperience catches up with him. We're getting off at 49, getting off at 49. Okay, he lost it. He lost it on the ramp. Lost it on the ramp. Get an ambulance here ASAP. He takes a 30 mile an hour off ramp at over 80 and skids out of control. Then reality comes crashing down. Don't move! Don't move! Officer Murray is relieved to see they're all alive. The teenager who's been playing outlaw is about to get treated like one. The young driver immediately acts 14 again. I'm not moving, I promise. I'm not moving. Before we ask you any questions, you understand your rights. After an hour of mayhem on the freeway, it's a miracle these teens will live to see adulthood. And police are covering every path. When everyone is out to get you. When panic is your only friend, how far do you really think you'll get? A stolen ambulance. Cops from two states on its tail. The ambulance swerves into oncoming traffic, then barrels back into the right lane, kicking up a cloud of dust. The cops know that if they don't end this soon, this ambulance thief will be a danger not only to himself, but to everyone on the road. A police car swings around to the left to try to box him in. But the ambulance fights back. The cop car nudges the ambulance closer to the side of the road. Suddenly, a passenger car in front of him gets entangled in the mayhem. This attempt has to be called off. The ambulance thief keeps police at bay, swerving back and forth until finally, he nearly topples onto his side. And this thief decides to give up and get out of this ambulance before he really needs one. Reading, England. Two suspects are fleeing from a violent home burglary. So far, they've managed to keep ahead of pursuing officers. But the police have a plan. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see the police attempt a rolling block here. You can be trying to get a couple of traffic cars in front of the offending vehicle. At over 90 miles an hour, the police prepare for a rolling roadblock. These suspects are about to run into a wall of slowed down traffic up ahead. Pulling down in lane three, into the near side. Hard shoulder, under the hard shoulder. A few yards ahead, the first police cars are waiting. But the suspects blow right by them. Unbelievable. They've gone right through the block. What happens next is an incredible display of skill and daring. As the suspects throw their loot out the window, two officers race ahead. Second police vehicle just got passed. If they can get the vehicle completely surrounded, they may have a chance. With two cars blocking the way just ahead, another one quickly moves up in the near lane to seal off any escape. It works. They've done it. They're boxed in. Now they just have to keep them there. A fifth unmarked unit barrels up the shoulder for reinforcement. Suddenly, the suspects see an opening. They go for it. These officers are right on top of these suspects. Take him out. Take him out. The squeeze is on. But they're actually forcing this car to the side of the road. What a brilliant maneuver. They stay right on top of them until the suspects run out of road. And then there's nowhere else to go. We have to stop, stop, stop. They're high centered on the guardrail. This chase is over. When you're trying to do something like this at 90 miles an hour, you better know what you're doing. Because if you do it right, the crooks go to jail for five years. And everyone else goes home alive. No further assistance required. Every chase must come to an end at some time. Most fleeing crooks reach a breaking point, but others try death-defying stunts. Even though there's no possible chance for escape. Atlanta, Georgia. A 4x4 full of renegade youngsters refuses to stop for pursuing officers. The squad cars pull up alongside the three suspects, trying to stop the speeding vehicle. But the suspects make a quick move. Suspect 
just made a right turn off the highway. Suddenly, a driver in a red Mustang challenges the 4x4. Yeah, what we're trying to burn dog it down, trust me here. Blocked both in front and from behind, the suspects make a bold right turn. But they still can't lose the cops. 51, start slowing down. Another quick turn causes the suspects to lose speed. With nowhere else to go, they jump. Most chases end when the suspect gets cornered by the police. But you can bet there's always some idiot who refuses to be taken without a fight. Camera copy three suspects in the vehicle. Just outside Atlanta, Georgia, a late-night outing turns into a crazed attempt to escape when the suspects choose to run from the law. The officers pin the vehicle in place. But the unrelenting driver still tries to squeeze through the police barricade. Finally, officers stop the madman in his tracks. The police following this car know that the driver is drunk, crazy, and has a loaded shotgun at his side. They think he's about to surrender when suddenly he blasts out the passenger side window then proceeds to toss his shotgun out of the car. He throws a few beer cans out the window, for some reason changes his clothes, and incredibly he pulls over waving a white flag. Booze, bullets, and brain disorders make for a deadly cocktail. Police officers know that a chase isn't always over when it appears to be. Some criminals are so desperate, they'll try anything. Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Or is it? And as I turned, I noticed somebody had jumped in to install my car. His $40,000 sports car is suddenly taken from in front of this donut shop. His buddy offers to help. I left my soda and my donuts on the table and just said, come on, John, let's go get your car. Let's go get them. The chase is on. The stolen vehicle races toward a construction site in the middle of a bridge. It's here the suspects make a big mistake. They have no room to maneuver and no room to stop. Watch as a surprised worker scrambles for safety. It's now a foot chase, and Roselli and the cops are right behind them. Now watch carefully as the driver's legs disappear over the side of the bridge. He actually jumps 50 feet into the ice-cold Delaware River. His accomplice is not quite that brave. An air bubble trapped under his jacket allows the jumper to float to safety. Before their trial for suspected car theft, both men were released on bail. They fled, and now are fugitives from the law. We never want someone to get hurt trying to help us, but sometimes the help that we get can end the chase. Chicago, Illinois. This brown and beige pickup truck surrounded by squad cars is traveling at high speeds. The subject inside that car is wanted for a homicide. The situation spells danger. Police suspect the man has a gun. They want him stopped before he uses it. The local police have closed off all traffic just in front of us. He's been weaving back and forth from lane to lane. He's coming off the left shoulder now. The suspect careens past traffic, and the Chicago PD can't stop him. Hey, head your way. Try and block him in. Shut him down right there. Shut him down right there. Two squad cars try to box him in. But as the suspect attempts to pass, he slams into a police car and tears off the bumper. He's just struck a police car and gone past him. He's traveling southbound in excess of 80 to 85 miles per hour. The suspect sees the road is blocked ahead, but he still has one chance. He dives across four lanes, and now he heads toward the shoulder. He's now going to take a dive off onto the right shoulder with a Palos Heights squad car in hot pursuit. We have at least 20 squad cars which are chasing this subject. He is going to try and run this roadblock. He's gone off onto the side into the grass. The truck keeps going as the suspect starts running. A foot pursuit on the foot pursuit. Oh, yes, we have a foot pursuit on the freeway. He jumps the fence and makes a final mad dash for freedom. A lot of state police squad cars are now chasing the suspect on foot. They have him running through the parking lot. Suddenly, a mystery man comes out of nowhere. He sees the chase, and without missing a beat, he throws himself in harm's way. 
He bravely holds the suspected murderer as cops swarm the scene and take it from there. The other officers that are coming up from the Illinois State Police, Palos Hills, Palos Heights, Willow Springs, LaGrange, Hinsdale, they have now subdued him. He is in custody here. A dangerous chase brought to a dramatic conclusion by this courageous citizen who found himself in the right place at the right time. Into the night. Under the gun. Over the top. And right into custody. These guys aren't going anywhere. Los Angeles, California. This young punker would be hard to miss anywhere. And even though his bright red hair is covered up with a hat, it's not hard for cops to spot him in this junked out truck. They want to talk to him about a possible hit and run from the day before. But this car isn't stopping. He isn't speeding either. He's just acting like the cops weren't there. Okay, this guy's not stopping. He's not slowing down. 10-4, I got the unit is in pursuit. Now four black and whites are getting impatient. They call the units ahead to stop him. Be advised, he's coming right at you. But the kid spots the cops ahead laying down a spike strip. He's in the number two lane. The suspect's now coming up on the spike strip. The officers are spreaded across the road. And the suspect, he's just walked over. He's walked over to avoid the strip. But he can't avoid it entirely. The razor-sharp spikes tear dime-sized holes into his tires. It looked like he was able to uh, avoid two tires, but his left side was uh, hit. This pursuit may terminate. But it looks like this kid doesn't intend to give up. As a rim is smoking, you can even see some flames right now. Tires on fire. He's completely running on the rim of that tire. He loses speed, but this chase is far from over. The cops keep their distance, waiting to see what he's going to do. The suspect keeps his cool, oblivious to the drama around him. He even takes a slug from his water bottle. But those blown out tires aren't going to hold up forever. Sounds like it's falling over. Watch out for possible foot pursuit. The car is still rolling, but he's already making a run for it. But not the way you would expect. Over, suspect is pulling over now. He's stopping. He's getting out. He's getting out. Suspect is now running. It's now a foot chase. As if there was all the time in the world, the suspect trots across the road. He's running away from officers into the bush right now. Officers are chasing him. All ground units be advised suspect on foot. Without looking back, he calmly climbs over this fence. He casually cuts across the train tracks. He bounds over another fence, narrowly missing the clutches of an officer. Now, with no one behind him, apparently thinking he's lost them, he slows to a walk. Big mistake. Okay, we now have uh, police units that are now on the surface street approaching him. Maybe he should look where he's going. He doesn't realize that he doesn't see those cop cars, Cops tackle him and he's down. A long and very unusual chase. But finally, it's over. Not only has this young man lost his truck, he just lost his freedom. Smyrna, Georgia. Sometimes the term car chase isn't exactly what you expect. A woman is pulled over for speeding at the top of this hill. But the officer who caught her forgets to put his squad car in park. Slowly, he realizes that something is not quite right, and the chase is on. Fast on his feet, the officer's back behind the wheel to finish writing that ticket. Maybe he'll give the woman a break. After all, a moving violation can happen to anyone. Generally speaking, the law enforcement aircraft will be lower than the news helicopters because the officers in the helicopter are directing officers on the ground to the suspect. Deep in the Arizona desert, local police pick up the trail of a bizarre carjacker on a dangerous joyride. Madam, advise him this subject is heavily armed. This man has carjacked six different cars, one after another, all taken at gunpoint. They've got a suspect boxed in. Air 16, he's not going to be able to get out of that. The police are out of their cars, moving in for the takedown. Careful, Suddenly, the driver darts away, leaving the police running behind him. Hey, here it goes. In the wash. Hey, in his haste to get away, the suspect drives deep into a gulf. He fills the desert air with clouds of smoke as he spins his wheels. Oh, he's backing up. But this blazer isn't built to stay stuck in a ditch. He passes squad car after squad car. 
The officers learn the man behind the wheel of a stolen car is most likely high on methamphetamine. Okay, watch yourself. This guy could be on drugs. They know too well the destruction this drug can cause. Back on city streets, the driver puts more lives at risk. He's going to run right through that light. He's going to make a turn. Here he comes right through. Then he spots his next carjacking victim, a young woman and her child. Right in front of police officers, he insanely tries to make her his seventh victim. Oh, look at this. He's going he's gonna to hijack this car. He's going to hijack this car right now. But the cops aren't fooling anymore. He's running. Okay, he has nowhere to go. Here he goes. Okay, he's got his hands up. He's got his hands up. Officers are finally able to take him down. Come in. Somebody come in. But the young mother is still shaken. He jumped out of his car and came around and tried to get in my door. And he, I had locked my doors, and so he was trying to get in my door. When the speed wears off, the driver faces 15 counts from aggravated assault to drug possession. Now sober, what he says to the judge reveals a firm grasp of the obvious. I don't know what the hell is going on in my head. You know, just go. I don't even know where I was trying to go. The chases that must be terminated. The suspects that must be stopped. He's going to hijack this car. Sometimes the only way to do it is the hard way. Greenwood, Indiana. This Chevy pickup looks familiar to these officers, but the driver doesn't. When they ask for identification, the driver responds by revving the engine. No, 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 hey. The mystery suspect gets the jump on pursuing officers. Speeds quickly reach 80 miles an hour on these small town streets. Stop signs become a blur. Up ahead, a red light and a railroad crossing. The suspect flies over the tracks. But at these speeds, it's hopeless. Start rescue. The driver hits a pole and it's all over. The suspect was treated for minor injuries and booked on felony evasion and recklessness. He turns out to be a local football coach, well-known and well-liked. So why did he run? And why didn't the officers recognize him? At the time, he was wearing a wig and women's clothing. The police don't want to make the situation worse. They want the chase to end. They don't want people hurt. They don't want people humiliated. Brea, California. We have a helicopter and units chasing you. Holy cow. Do you know what I'm dressed like? Brand new dress on. That's what I got. Now they'll see me all dressed up like this, and then they want to take me down and parade me around for everybody in the jail. This fleeing driver called 911 on his cell phone and was patched through to the dispatch operator. Can you pull over for our police unit? Well, when I get the makeup off, I will. Okay. Hope this won't make the Channel 4 news. I mean, it's not like I'm a robber or nothing. So do you have your makeup off? Here. He finally pulls into an out-of-the-way parking lot. The officers know the man probably isn't a threat, but they still have to follow procedure. Oh, man, you're going to talk. Okay, he's hollering at me now. Okay, follow his instructions. The man emerges from the truck, but not completely. The officers quickly place him in custody. Anybody else inside the car, Mr. An officer carefully looks inside the man's truck, on the front seat, a wig in the man's street clothes. Relieved, the officer can't help but smile. Wanted only for a minor license plate violation, the man was too embarrassed to stop. Now he faces a felony charge, and even more embarrassment, all because he chose to run. Los Angeles, where the cameras are always rolling. I'm showing my speed at 100 miles an hour just to keep up with this guy right now. This felon is only three months out of prison, but from the way he drives his stolen pickup, he's anxious to go now back. Now on the left-hand turn lane on the wrong side of the road, there's pedestrians. He just misses a pedestrian. The country watches in horror as he circles his neighborhood. Then he drives by his house where his sister makes a desperate plea for him to surrender. Someone in the road right there trying to stop this pursuit. Somebody is confronting this vehicle here. She tried to get into the vehicle. Millions of viewers gasp as the man peels out, leaving her sprawled on the pavement. The man rages on, even as the truck disintegrates. It takes over an hour for the abused vehicle to fall apart. Oh, there goes the tire. There goes the tire. He's running on the rim only at this time. But the man keeps going. He's boxed in here. Oh, he smashed into a vehicle. He's getting out of the vehicle. 
out of the vehicle. He got into that van. Looks like he's carjacking another vehicle here. The victim in the minivan tries to escape, but his seatbelt holds him back. The suspect punches the gas. The vehicle's going. Now this is now a hostage situation. They're stopping. The vehicle is stopping at this time. The, the person is trying to get out. Oh, no, he's being dragged. The man tumbles out of the door, but his arm snags the belt again. He's dragged along the concrete before he falls free. The suspect races on, completely out of control. He's had total disregard for the red light. Oh, look at that truck. Just being, uh, around here. This chase has all the signs of ending in tragedy. We're now hearing from the dispatcher that the party will shoot the police. That's what he told his mother. He will shoot the police. Police prepare to ram the vehicle, but the suspect dodges their every move. Back on the freeway, he accelerates to almost 100 miles an hour, and then he loses it. Oh, the vehicle's out of control. The van skids into the freeway wall. Two tires are blown. And this is going to come to an end right here. Suspect getting out. This is very dangerous. He's running across the center divider. Runs across the opposite lanes of traffic. We've got three air units overhead right now. But the wildly manic suspect is finally brought to a halt by a chain link fence. There he is. You see him. He's on the ground. In a city where spectacles are king, this one had everyone on the edge of their seats. Incredibly, no one was seriously injured. And the police got their man. A terrifying news event with a true Hollywood ending. Helena, Montana. The pursuit of this blue pickup started as a license plate violation. Now, because the driver won't stop, it's felony evasion. When another unit tries to block him, the suspect simply goes around. And when he approaches this roadblock, he finds a chink in the armor. He's going around you, Dave. He hits an officer's car and goes around again. But when he can't get around this deputy, he rams her at 60 miles an hour. She goes flying off the road. Now it's assault with a deadly weapon. Are you okay, girl? Officers have had enough. They know this is one suspect who won't hesitate to roll over anything that gets in his way. And right now, he's headed for town. The officer who was just rammed, Deputy Carol Schumacher, volunteers to take the lead. Now watch on the left. She races up and pulls even. The suspect tries to sideswipe her off the road. But she holds her ground and squeezes ahead. Almost had you. The suspect is desperate to get back in the lead. He accelerates between the units, but Officer Schumacher closes in. Risking her life to end this case, she perfectly wedges the suspect between the two cars. Without a shot being fired or harm to innocent life, this chase is over. I got him. I got him. A police officer would probably prefer to do anything other than be involved in a police shooting. That's probably the hardest decision they'll ever have to make in their career or their life. Evening rush hour. Los Angeles, California. Suspect now on the right-hand shoulder, LAPD air unit overhead. You can see its spotlight illuminating the suspect's vehicle. How does a simple traffic violation end up in a high-speed tragedy? This started as a simple car stop. The driver took off and is now roaring down the freeway in this powerful pickup. The automobile swerving to get out of the suspect's way. This is very erratic driving, very dangerous. Now taking the off-ramp here at DeSoto. People trying to scramble out of the suspect's way. Suspect wanted for failure to yield. Back on the boulevard, the suspect changes lanes and races against traffic. Still moving on the wrong side of the road. People trying to scramble out of the suspect's way. What is this man running from? He has no warrants. He works in a family-run business. Even his truck is new. His running seems incomprehensible. We have a lot of congestion up ahead, a lot of cross traffic. 127 ground units are surrounding the vehicle. Okay, suspects on the uh, island. Okay, pulling ahead. Okay, TA, traffic accident. Okay, second and third traffic accident. Suspects' tires are squealing. You can see the smoke. Stop your Officers vehicle. are now on foot. Stop your Weapons vehicle. raised. They're telling the suspect to stop. Almost got crushed by the automobile. The driver swerves beneath the overpass, hits the wall. Then gunshots are heard. I believe a shot has been fired. An officer finally puts an end to this insanity. Officers run toward the scene. 
All they know is there's been a shooting. LAPD is now asking for a rescue ambulance. Afterwards, the lieutenant in charge explains what happened. The one officer fired one round at the suspect, striking him in the upper body. The overpass is swarming with squad cars and rescue units, but it's too late for the suspect. Now we'll never know what drove this man on his senseless journey through the city streets. What we do know is that for the price of a traffic ticket, a man ends up paying with the loss of his life. And the officer who was forced to fire that fatal shot, he will live forever with the terrible question. Why? I believe a shot has been fired. Why did he run? One of the saddest and most dangerous situations a police officer faces is when domestic violence spills out into the street. Campbell County, Tennessee. The man behind the wheel of this truck has just come from a violent argument with his girlfriend. What the police don't know is that he's armed and very dangerous. I ain't telling no more now. Put your hand on the He's got a gun! The driver takes off, weaving from lane to lane at 70 miles an hour. The suspect threatens to run officers off the road. If you fall over the road, I won't let nobody find us soon. But this driver isn't content with mere threats. 7-11 County, he has fired a shot at me. Now the suspect is wanted for attempted murder of a police officer. He fires again. This time at the vehicles in front of him. Central, he is firing at other traffic. Deputies realize innocent lives are at stake. They increase their firepower. Hey, we need a shotgun. Uh, Marty, bring a shotgun out. Once the suspect is clear of other traffic, the officers make their move. An officer gets into position and shoots out the truck's right rear tire. Listing dangerously to the right, the truck exits. When the suspect stops under the bridge, officers rush to the truck. But when the driver starts firing at officers, the officers have no choice. The result is the only one possible for a man who clearly would not be taken alive. Inside the truck, deputies find three handguns and a rifle, along with marijuana and cocaine. One officer sustained a minor wound and was back on the job the next day. Anger, guns, and cars, a terrible combination. In every one of these cases we've seen tonight, one thing is constant, a stupid decision made in haste. Pure adrenaline, fight or flight. That one moment of panic that can turn into a lifetime of regret. Stay alive. Don't run. Low. He's up and running. He's up and running. Incredibly, he continues on pure adrenaline. He's headed for the woods on the far side. No officers in sight here. He's in the clear. Police have no way to stop him, except intimidation. This chopper pilot swoops in and cuts off the suspect's path. He's, uh, okay, he stopped running. The police are right on top of him. It works. He's surrendering to the helicopter. This thief was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And he took the fall. But somewhere today in the city of Houston are three very lucky bank robbers. Charlotte, North Carolina. A man has stolen a car that is almost perfect for outracing pursuing officers. A Mercedes-Benz 400 SE with 300 horses under the hood. Come on, guys, you gotta move, you gotta move, you gotta move. But waiting in the wings is a secret weapon. A South Carolina trooper driving a super-equipped Ford Mustang. The smaller Mustang dogs, the more powerful bends relentlessly. Other vehicles like this motorcycle gladly give way. When two trucks block the road ahead, the suspect passes on the right and quickly races off. The frustrated trooper has to wait. I can't get by these trucks. Watch again. He blitzes past the double rig on the right, coming within inches of these merging cars. Other units quickly catch up to him. But traffic is thick now, and the suspect swerves right into a construction zone. The officer tries to block the fans from escaping. He smashes directly into the side of the big German car. But again, the Mercedes muscles its way through. Go 
Hold on, South Carolina. Back on surface streets, the officer catches up, pulling even with the suspect. But up ahead, a van, headed straight for them. From the unit behind, we see the suspect playing a dangerous game of chicken. To save an innocent life, the trooper pulls aside and lets the Mercedes pass. You had to do it, bud. Down the road, the Mercedes loses the Mustang by turning on a dime into a gas station. Somebody get in front of him! The other officers quickly take up the slack. A trooper tries to force the Mercedes to spin out, but this Benz was built to hug the road, and it's not letting go. This elegant German car is falling apart. To make matters worse, it's now rush hour, and the suspect is headed back to the freeway. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Desperate people. Desperate measures. Fight or flight, they choose to run. Every day, people run from the law. Chasing the suspect. They take the big chance. Hey, he lost it. Get it they risk their lives. Holding on to the rail. The lives of the police. And the lies of anyone who gets in their way. He's going to hijack this car. Much of what you see tonight has never been seen before. This is footage provided by police and news agencies from around the world. Take him out. Take him out. So that we may understand the full extent of the problem. Because if you're an innocent bystander caught in the middle of a chase, you need to know what to expect. This isn't just a problem for the people who run. It's a problem for all of us. For everyone on the road. Oh, he dropped! I'm Sheriff John Bennell. When it comes to pursuits, this is the cop's best friend. Almost no one can outrun police cars and a helicopter, but they keep trying. Sometimes it's pure adrenaline, fight or flight. That one moment of panic that can lead to a lifetime of regret. So keep your seatbelt on. What we're about to show you will change your thinking about police pursuits forever. Houston, Texas. The entire police department is mobilized looking for three bank robbers. We've got a maroon sedan in sight, fleeing northbound. A car guns its engines. Use caution, these suspects are armed. What the police don't realize is that they aren't following the bank robbers. These are two novice housebreakers on their way home from a job. They thought the sirens were meant for them. So they ran, and the police follow. The burglars panic and barrel into a crowded intersection. He's cutting through the intersection into the far lane. Oh, he just took a hit. He just took a hit. One suspect thinks he can escape. But with the cops approaching from both directions, the only way to go is down. Then he realizes his mistake. Looks like he's holding on to the railing. He is holding on to the railing. Oh, he dropped. He dropped. The suspect dropped from the railing. He tumbled three stories onto the concrete. Officers need to end this chase now. All right, Jack, right here. I'm coming up behind. A determined trooper rides the suspect's bumper. The Mercedes begins to swerve, but hangs on. One more nudge, and the Mercedes goes flying up the freeway on-ramp out of control. And this chase is over. What used to be an $85,000 luxury sedan is now scrapped. What used to be a car thief is now an inmate, serving 20 years. And the South Carolina Mustang, still chasing them down. Cherokee County, Oklahoma. Pursuit of a stolen truck with an innocent passenger. 110 miles per hour. Visual glimpses of him ever now that he's still northbound on Highway 10. I'm gaining on him. The culprit has already pulled way ahead of the slower police truck. Got the guy off to it, set up a roadblock for being shut down. The driver of the stolen truck veers across the yellow line, blindly hoping other cars won't be there. Neither he nor his passenger know that tragedy is just seconds away. He's uh, almost got one hit on. Oh no, he's lost it. He's lost it, Turkey. 